So uh, I'm Sebastian Pavi. I'm, I'm partner at, at Bain. I've been at Bain for 16 years, um, and I specialize in retail. I spent a lot of my time in retail, and I'm doing a lot of work in advanced analytics and how we can use it, you know, advanced analytics and machine learning to help our retail clients. So that's basically where I specialize. So I'm very uh, excited to co with you and share, uh, you know, the innovation we are leading at Bain. Arthur, you want to be next? Sure. Hi everyone, I'm Arthur. I'm an associate partner uh, at Bain & Company in the Los Angeles office. Um, and I'm also focusing, working a lot with Sebastian and, and Bilal, uh, focusing on helping our retail clients grow uh, their footprint, leveraging advanced analytics and, and data sets, working um, a lot with Carto as well. Hi everyone, um, my name is Bilal. I am director uh, within our advanced analytic group. And um, with you know, I look at a lot of analytics, but my focus has been in the last few years, especially on um, location intelligence or geospatial analysis. And I've been working with Arthur and Seb um, in focusing really on the uh, retail side of uh, the geospatial analysis. And right here, uh, you know, happy to be here uh, to discuss a lot of those things that we've done um, for our clients and uh, within this uh, basically area. Great, perfect. Thank, thank, thank you, guys. Um, so let's maybe move on to um, our presentation, and I will probably start um, by sharing some high-level trend that I'm sure uh, you guys are experiencing as well. Um, uh, you know, as, as retail, um, uh, as people working in retail. But there is four big trends that we are dealing with that we are talking with our client all the time. Number one, e-commerce. So e-commerce is a pretty big deal, especially during COVID. Uh, and the rise of e-commerce has forced most retailers to rethink about like, what should be my footprint? What should be the optimal number of stores? And that's has been a pretty big impact. So a lot of impact of like this, you know, booming growth of e-commerce uh, on your business model. Number two, rethinking your, your fulfillment models. Like how, what should be the role of your physical assets of your physical stores given like the, the, the growth uh, that we have in, in, in e-commerce? Um, so, you know, a lot of innovation here are like, you know, using your store almost as a, like uh, agile DC, uh, allowing for flexible fulfillment is usually uh, part of the, of the story here. Point number three here is really around the desire for more convenience. Um, most retailers are trying to experiment around like new store formats. How can you use like technology differently, especially in a context where we have like rise in wages, high rent. Um, so how the store economics could work better with like different formats, smaller format, more urban formats, a lot of innovation here happening across a lot of different retail verticals. And the last point is around like, you know, reimagine the customer experience, like what should be the right experience in store out of the store too, and how you can engage with your customer differently to increase food traffic. So that's been like four trends that we are seeing e-commerce booming, uh, impact on your fulfillment models, how you can you know re reimagine your store formats, and you know and as part of that like reinventing uh, the, the the customer experience. So I wanted to share that given like it's a very timely topic that we are like constantly working on. Uh, if we move on to the next page, this is where you know what we've done with Cardo and, and us at Bay is like. How can we use uh, data analytics and local location intelligence to actually help um, find the right uh, models? Um, especially around three questions. Number one, how can you use data analytics to actually accelerate new unit growth with the right uh, format? So here's like assessing where you will expect to make more money um, by and where we should open the store with the right paybacks. Um, you think like you know a, a very data driven approach. Um, number two is like, how can you rethink about your footprint and rationalize it? You know, like, you know, is it the right time to actually use data analytics to uh, rationalize and streamline your, your footprint um, to reflect the, 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 the new reality? So that's usually where you can uh, think about relocation and uh, reassess the health of your footprint using data analytics. And point number three is really like, given the impact of e-commerce and the change in digital sales, how can you rethink about your digital assets to make sure you know you have the right DC approach, the right 
the supply chain approach and you use your um, the, the, the right store formats um, to best support your needs. So that's the, the three key topics usually that we are like um, constantly uh, dealing with our clients um, of how you can use data analytics and especially location intelligence that we are going to introduce in a minute to actually help answer those questions. If you go on to the next page, here's that, you know, we've done a lot of work for in retail at Bain for years and uh, done a lot of work on development, like store development and footprint optimization. And I will say the three things that you have here on the page are probably the, the best practices we've seen across the best retailers. But number one, as I mentioned, uh, the best retailers on development are really use, are very data driven, using advanced analytics as a way to um, improve uh, the, 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 improve the, uh, the paybacks of their stores uh, and make better and faster decisions. So that's usually number one is being sophisticated, really helps. Number two, beyond like knowing where you want to be the site and being great at site selection with the right site, site format, like quite, you know, what is really critical is how I, you know, how capable are you into mobilizing the team, uh, like the development team, the field teams, or your franchisees if you work with franchisees? Like, how can you mobilize um, and do, you know make a plan reality? So that's usually number two is being very good at with the right operating model to actually go and, and deliver. And three, it's really around like the test and learn approach more than ever today. Like being able to test your formats, learning quickly and uh, and adjusting. Is something that we know is is kind of key right now. So three uh, three men, uh, uh, what you know, three key principles per se that best retailers are doing. And quite frankly, if you just focus on number one, this is where we had a lot of discussions with our client. And if you move on to the next page after, the reason why we um, initially started Vantage, that is a, a new platform uh, that we developed with Cardo. Um, was really to uh, answer a need from our clients. Um, most of our clients in retail work with like the, the biggest retailers in the world. They all have tools. All, and I'm sure you know, a lot of you guys are on the line right now have tools, um, like to do site selection or to explore or to, to have a little bit of a view on, you know, um, on how is distributed your footprint and you know, how close you are from competitors. And sometimes you need a little bit of predictions too. But the reality is like, usually the way it's done, it's like the real estate team or the development team is like connecting with outside vendors and throwing a bunch of data. Um, the vendor is also coming with a lot of data too. And, you know, they, they develop a black box solution and say, well, that's all that's, you know, this is basically your new tool. Um, and now go and socialize it with the you know, people on the ground, the, the field guys or franchises and hoping that you get trust. But a lot of our clients came back and say, you know what, it, we have issues with that. Because like uh, right now we, we have to, um, we have some limitation with this tool. Number one, they are very standard, so they are not really meeting my needs. For instance, like, you know, they highlight opportunity in places where I cannot go given like, I don't have the DC or the supply chain that works. Or it's not like there is, uh, it doesn't, you know, take into account like, my store economics the right way. Like it's not because I have high sales that I will make a lot of money. I need to understand like impact of wage, in terms of friends. I need to have like the store economics much more thoughtfully articulated. So usually that's part of the limitations. Like it's too um, too much sales focus and it's not enough sophisticated to reflect my needs. Number two, on the data center side, usually not enough. It's very like very basic uh, regressions or things that are backward looking. So Sometimes helpful to understand, you know, the, the historical view of, of your performance, but not great at like being predictive or prescriptive on where you should be the site and why kind of site. The other point that usually we get from our clients and the feedback where is like, it's a very static solution. So every single year I need to go back and ask for a refresh because I've been some stores, my colleagues have been some stores and, you know, the, the, the thing that moved uh, since a year ago. So they constantly ask for a refresh. And last point, but not the least, very low adoption across the organization, given people are using it more as like a helpful input, but then they continue to make decisions based on gut feeling or like, you know, reality or on the ground. So based on that, like we came back and say, well, given we are doing a lot of white space and that is for our clients and we are doing advanced analytics all the time, well, well, let us help you and develop something that you can 
live beyond, I can answer the most complicated question you're asking, leveraging our best capability at Bain using machine learning, using also our business consulting background. And, uh, you know, augmenting our cap you know, capability with Carlo. So that's basically how we ended up there and creating that new solution. And I will um, hit the one more page and hand over to you, Arthur, but the key question that we try to answer usually when we develop, uh, when we've developed that tool are the following months. Um, are your store performing well versus what they should be, uh, like versus the expected performance? And not only in terms of sales, but also in terms of profitability, in terms of payback. Um, is it a good site to build a new store? Is it an attractive location? And what kind of returns, cash and cash return, can I expect? How will this site cannibalize an existing store? How many stores can I build? Where should I look for a site? What will be the net impact of closing a store on the other? Uh, how can I optimize our footprint? Like which store format should I have where? And where should I open? So that's the kind of, it's a short list of questions that we are trying to focus on when we develop this kind of tool for our client. It's tied instead or made to our, our current needs, but um, we're going to introduce like um, the, the high level um, uh, approach we're typically using when we do this. So Arthur, I hand over to you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, so as Sam mentioned, the, the value advantage is that it's really a comprehensive solution, meaning that it's not just a tool or software, it's the combination of three main elements. We have a comprehensive footprint strategic playbook, customized behind machine learning software, and a, a result delivery dimension where we work in close collaboration with all development stakeholders. On the first point, on this strategic approach, I think one of the things that we realized is that quite often our clients face some issues with development that are rooted at the core of their strategy. And what we are truly helping them with is not just solve one issue, which is where they, they need to develop their next store and, and what is the expected returns. It's truly how they should rethink their approach to development. Should they grow and increase their local market share? Should they expand somewhere where they, they are not present yet? And that's truly what, what we are helping them address is much more than just, um, just having one tool or one software that tells you where you can have good returns. Of course, once we have developed this footprint strategy and, and this approach to development, we then leverage uh, this customized leave behind machine learning software and, and this tool that we develop in order to answer and address these strategic questions. But we really use the value that is created with this, um, with this software and algorithm in order to serve a strategy. And then one key element is quite often when you have this new approach to development, new software with machine learning and advanced data set, advanced analytics, quite often it will change in a very profound way the way you approach development. And in order to help our client um, absorb and absorb this change and make the most of this new strategy, this new tool, what we do is we, we truly, from the beginning to the end of this process, we adopt a collaborative development process. We involve all the stakeholders, that will include the operators, but we also include franchisees, if it's a, if it's a franchisee brand, in order to make sure that all the stakeholders feel uh, very involved and that we maximize the adoption and and the fact that every stakeholder are going to use this tool because we have we have realized that quite often um, some of our clients do have tools but they are because they can be considered sometimes a bit as black box they are not always trusted by everyone not always used to their full potential and that's something that we truly want to address so again, real combination of three elements, a strategic vision, tools in order to sell this strategy, and, and a very robust result delivery and implementation um, piece. Now, very specifically on the software approach, the advantage leverage is advanced data sets, advanced analytics, and all this is integrated into a customized and dynamic software and user interface. In terms of data, 
uh, we partner with Carto in order to get an advanced and extended data set library that are ready uh, for activation. And the beauty of working on the on the having this software on the Carto platform is that um, not only we have a direct access to all the data sets that are on the Carto platform, but that also gives us flexibility in order to upload and connect directly with any other data set that our client may have, for example, already uh, acquired themselves or that could not be available yet on the Carto platform. We truly spend a lot of time, and this is where uh, a lot of the value comes from, we spend a lot of time crafting and tailoring the most significant variables for each of our clients. Um, I'm sure most of you know, I mean, each brand is so specific that defining the right variable that are meaningful for this specific and this specific market or country is critical for the accuracy of the predictions. And of course, as I mentioned, um, as things keep evolving very fast in the in the retail uh, industry, we we make sure that everything is refreshed automatically, either when new external data sets become available, but even when uh, you as a retailer develop a new store, it will automatically impact, be refreshed on the platform. And for example, if you are thinking of using a white space feature, um, automatically, because your footprint has changed, the footprint of your competitors has evolved, it will redesign the new trade areas that are identified for development. In terms of analytics, we have a library of algorithm uh, that we leverage and that we use, and we systematically tailor them to each brand, each situation, each concept or format as well. In terms of dashboard, and, and you will see that uh, in a minute, we, we partner with Carto in order to develop a, a really flexible um, platform that can be customized as much as possible. Because again, we believe that in, in having a great algorithm, great accurate prediction is not enough. We need to make sure that the tool, software, and the solution that we provide our clients have the highest adoption possible. And, and what we do deliver is through this intuitive and flexible software that our clients will continue to use um, for several years after we, we are done with this project. And so with that, I will switch over to a, to a very short uh, demo of, of our tool. The first thing that you will see, and, and this is a, a, a demo that we that we have built with Carto, but the first thing that you will see on this screen is what we call the explore view. In this explore view, you have access to all your footprint, um, and you can see the legion here. You have uh, different formats, hypermarket, express, mall. You have a few widgets on the right hand side that can be refreshed automatically as you will zoom in or zoom out. It will adapt the distribution of stores by sales, for example, you have the list of stores, and all of these can be adjusted and customized based on everyone's needs. On the left-hand side, you can see a few filters. You can decide to select just specific formats. You can, of course, filter on sales or any, uh, any dimension that you want and that you need to see will be there. You can, for example, show all the stores that are currently being developed. You can decide to show other retailers and competitors and also color code different block groups based on demographics, based on traffic, based on mobile data, for example. So you have a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can show on the screen. But where the, the magic tree comes from is being able in just a few clicks to launch a white space assessment. So if you click there, you will be able to adjust a few parameters for to run a white space assessment. You can either decide to input what is the minimum cash and cash uh, returns that you want for your next store, or you can adjust and, and decide to show uh, just that in terms of sales. So for example, here, you'd be starting a white space model where you just want to have all the stores in the US that have at least a predicted sales of at least $1.5 million. You also, of course, have 
uh, the other main criterion, which is cannibalization. So for example, here, we would be selecting just the trade areas that have a maximum predicted cannibalization on any surrounding store of about 10%. And you have the ability of running these white space assessment just for a specific uh, DMA or for anywhere uh, in the US. And then you will just type in a name and run the white space. What this does, once you have, uh, once you have run this white, sp this white space, you will see some different you will see these shapes that appear and each of these shapes are rep represent a specific trade area that the model has screened over 200,000 commercial center used as seed location in order to check prediction what could be the store performance if you were to open the store there and it has selected the trade areas that meet the criteria. So above 1.5 million sales and um, under 10% max, uh, cannibalization. And this is basically what you will give either to the franchisees, to your development team, in order to tell them, this is a great area to look for a site. Let's connect with our broker and let's try to find some real estate. And as you can see, if you click on the trade area, you have different, um, a bit more, specific prediction, the AUV is between 1.8, 1.9, predicted cash and cash, cannibalization. And you can also uh, draw different catchment area based on dry time, radius, distance, some demographics aggregated within this area. And you can also explore in street view or get the satellite view if you want to look for a site uh, before driving there. And then we have also developed what we call the drop a pin feature, which is Basically, uh, very simple, but let's just say you find a specific like real estate and, and commercial real estate available somewhere, you will drop the pin exactly where you have found it, set the location. You can either input some specific data point for this specific site in terms of EBITDA margin, cost of implement, uh, the access from the street, how, how easy it is. You can enter and we have simplified it, but you can enter many, many different uh, variables there and then run specific store simulation for this very specific pin. So it's, it's really a, a two-step process. One, run the white space, identify the trade areas that meet the criteria for your new stores, then connect with your broker. And once you have found a great site, run the drop a pin prediction. And if these prediction for this very specific pin still meet your criteria, then you can move to the next step, which is submitting the, the site for approval and, and developing it. Moving back to um, um, the presentation, leveraging advantage for footprint expansion truly delivers uh, great value to our client. Um, a few examples of, of our past project uh, usually, when we partner with our client to to do vintage, um, we we find a great potential to develop more store. Typically, on one project, we identify over three times more great location than what was in their strategic plan before we we join. Um, vintage enables faster development through a proactive approach, and that's true a, a radical change in the store development process. Usually, and mostly in franchise businesses, um, development teams can be a bit reactive, meaning that they wait for franchises to submit stores. Having Vantage truly shifts this paradigm, meaning that now the development team having Vantage can be proactive and go see franchises and suggest, tell them where they should develop their next store, which gives you much more control in order to design your, your strategic development. And of course, better stores. Having Vantage, having this predictive, this very accurate predictive model in terms of sales, cash and cash, and cannibalization, truly allows you to avoid mistakes. And that's truly what it's all about. Um, what you want in development is really not to develop bad stores. Um, and in the test that we've done, having Vantage, in, in most cases, would have avoided two thirds 
of the mistakes that are defined as, as stores that are below uh, the criteria. Um, and in terms of uh, return on investment or on paying fees, it's, it's really pretty good returns. Uh, one example that we have here, it was uh, over 50x ROI uh, on paying fees. And so with that, I will pause and, and we'll take some questions from the audience. Hi there, Arthur, Sebastian, Bill. thank you so much for the presentation. It was really interesting, particularly to see the live demo, to see that in action. Always brave to do a live demo as well, so well done, Arthur. Um, quick question. Um, you, you covered a lot about the site selection use cases, and something uh, now with the growth of direct-to-consumer, e-commerce, supply chain use cases and applying geospatial to that. Are you starting to see a lot more of those across your customer portfolio? Yeah. Did I want to take this one? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so yes, we have started seeing a lot of uh, supply chain questions. I mean, even in, in, in our site selection work, you know, there's always an aspect of the supply chain as well. Um, can we place our outlets where we can support them in a way that you know our our um, overhead cost is is reduced and our our you know, supply chain cost is also reduced. So there's definitely more aspect of supply chain trying to optimize, trying to reach broader market with the minimal kind of number of uh, outlets there that is coming in. And also I think the other aspect to it is um, it's it's more top of mind because uh, because of COVID. I mean this this aspect was already there, but because of COVID, it has kind of uh, uh, come into the market fairly quickly, which is people can now do a lot of stuff online, which makes a lot of retailers think about how to strategically place their um, outlets in the market so they can cater for both uh, online consumers and uh, our customers or their, their physical customers who want to walk through the door. So that kind of brings in the aspect of uh, how do we strategically place our, our uh, outlets so we can cater to, to both type of uh, customers. And that creates a you know bigger question of supply chain. So there's a lot of different aspects of supply chain that come into play, and we're we're seeing a lot of it. Fantastic. Um, and in terms of the data use, obviously we could see there within the Vantage solution that you have lots of external data streams. Are there plans to add any other data sets, or have particular customers asked you to expand and maybe include weather data, geosocial, any of those types? Yep. To, to be honest, this is where we spend a lot of time. It's like, you know, developing machine learning algorithm is one thing, but it all starts with selecting the right data. So usually we try to um, first make sure we craft the right variables, but we also look, you know, we, find, we basically identify the best data. And usually it's very collaborative with our clients. Um, it's always a different story depending on the industry and the, the, the client focus, but you know, some clients are, you know, I've already some great segmentation of that client that they want to use. Um, and we are basically like using it, augmenting it and make sure like as we are looking, you know, we are developing the tool, we are looking for lookalike of people that look the same um, and, and are actually great clients of them. So, um, yeah, you know, sometimes it's more about like, you know, uh, having a sense of human mobility data is a bigger deal. Sometimes it's more about like mining credit card data information. Um, it's always a different story, but uh, we basically usually leverage what our currents have, augment with our own um, uh, data sets, and, and create some specific uh, a specific data set as well based on you know multiple variables. Fantastic. Really? Well, um, I think we are just about out of time. Uh, for anybody who didn't catch maybe all of the presentation, uh, the Bain. Uh, demo uh, and presentation will be available on our YouTube channel, so keep an eye out for that.